and welcome back. We're about to venture off into our second uh, conversation for today. We had a delegation who actually uh, filled with students, actually, who went over to Washington at the OAS, the Organization of American States, and uh, they're in with us to tell us all about that experience. I'm excited about it. In with us, uh, Ms. Michelle Arnold, who was actually the lead chaperone. You had the big job. <laughs> Mr. Starrett Green, OAS uh, Belize the representative, he's all the way in there. And that's a nice shirt, by the way. I like that shirt. We also have uh, Emily Quinto, who is in with us. She is actually general committee. Uh, she's a sophomore, which is excellent. And uh, I'm trying to get your name, it's sir. It's Ethan Singh. Ethan Singh. <laughs> who is also a member of the delegation. All right, all right. Guys, welcome. It's so, nice to, it's so nice to have you in. I'm actually feeling that Washington coldness. <laughs> 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 Welcome and good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, we, we want to know all about it. The experience, I'm sure, was something uh, to reckon with. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of Belizeans would actually want to do something like this. Sure. So let's jump right into it. Uh, uh, the, the, the chaperone, yes. tell us about it. What was that experience like to eventually venturing off with uh, students all the way to Washington? Okay, um, there is an intensive preparation process um, that happens prior to the trip. That's where most of the work gets done. Mm -hmm. um, the researching, the writing their position papers, the practicing of debating, negotiation. Um, and so when we actually go on the trip and arrive at the conference, it's just uh, facilitating and implementing what they have already prepared for in okay. the working groups. Um, we had a very intense, um, packed week with meetings, not just the conference itself, but uh, okay. we set up ahead of time meetings with different ambassadors so that they can get real hands-on, real-time information about some of the topics they were debating. So we had an opportunity to meet with um, the Assistant uh, Secretary General of the OAS, Mr. Nestor Mendez, mm -hmm. who's also Belizean, so that was sure. awesome for the, the students to meet him. Uh, we met with the Costa Rican ambassador, Mr. Sotella, because our students were assigned um, the country of Costa Rica mm. uh -huh. to debate and research on. Yes. And then we also had the opportunity <clears throat> to meet with um, Ambassador Daniel Gutierrez, the Belizean ambassador. So we had a very intense week, um, and we also threw in a college tour. Oh, oh. yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, let's step back for a okay. minute, and we have uh, Starrett here to tell us a bit about why the OAS hosts this uh, this particular event um, and what it is designed to be able to accomplish. Well, if you'll permit me, Melanie, I, li mm -hmm. I wish to begin mm -hmm. by offering congratulations to the Belize High School. Mm -hmm. okay. This is the third consecutive year that they have fielded a team mm -hmm. to be part of this program. And I think the leadership there, Ms. Jamie Osher, indeed members of her staff mm -hmm. and parents mm -hmm. and students mm -hmm. as well who rub their shoulders together, work together, and to, to make this a, a success. As far as the Organization of American States is concerned, this program is important for four main reasons. One, it allows our students to have first-hand information of the work of the organization yeah. in how it promotes democracy, supports the defense of human rights, uh, enhances multi-dimensional security and fosters integral development. And we believe when students are exposed to what the organization does, then they feel more a part of it mm -hmm. and can buy into what it does. Secondly, we, the program is designed, Malini, to ensure that students understand the world of diplomacy. Mm -hmm. How do countries build relationships and how do they promote their own interest? Mm -hmm. And third, the, the program is designed to expose students to the mechanisms of democracy, the protocols, the procedures, the mechanisms, the rules that govern diplomacy. And finally, we believe that when we bring young people together, it creates a special dynamism. They get to know one another. They learn from one another. They build friendships and they build relationships and they build networking. These things are important for today and indeed tomorrow. And that's essentially is what the program is designed to do. So let's find out if it hit the target. <laughs> <laughs> we have Ethan and Ethan, Emily yeah. with us and I want you to tell me uh, about your experience. Let's start with you, Ethan. Okay, well this is actually my 
second time going. Yeah. I went last year as well, but to me, I found this experience, I think, much better than the one before. Mm -hmm. um, this year, uh, our topic had to do with human rights mm -hmm. and representing the delegation of Costa Rica. Uh, that's sort of a, a shining point for Costa Rica as they're you know, very good in that area. Mm -hmm. yes. So I, along with some other delegations, seven others, including Canada, Chile, Bolivia, a couple others, uh, we need to craft a resolution uh, revolving around human rights. Mm -hmm. So uh, I found that the people I worked with there were actually very good, uh, very friendly, very helpful. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, I think that's how we were able to craft the resolution to actually pass with, I think, uh, 25 out of 27 of people voting for it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Excellent. And Excellent. the resolution was? Uh, the resolution had to do with uh, guaranteeing protections for LGBTI individuals that's in the Americas. Hmm. <laughs> okay, good. And Emily? Well, this was my first time attending the MOA, so it was a new and thrilling experience for me. Um, along the way, I was a bit nervous my first time, as yeah. I said, but eventually I meet all the other delegations and we become friendly with one, with one another and um, it brought to my attention about the problems within the hemisphere, for example, political, economic, social problems within Latin America mm -hmm. and it has like brought um, more knowledge to me on how to negotiate and what diplomacy really is. So that's what I really learned during this experience. This is such an important experience. And I, and I have to tell you, when I was your age, I had no understanding as to what the OAS was sure. in terms of how a regional body works. On, other than being able to say on an exam, the OAS is the organization <laughs> of America. America is, yes. <laughs> and, and it happened. Sure. Um, this first-hand experience into how uh, a regional body functions, how diplomacy is important, yes. how words have meaning, yes. um, and how uh, solutions can be found through peaceful negotiations mm -hmm. is one that not many young people are able to learn. Mm -hmm. um, until they, they have a bit more exposure. So I want you to tell me what has been the most interesting part of your discovery in how to finalize the wording for your resolutions, how to negotiate with the other, the other young people that were there on the issues that were important to you, and also being able to pass a successful resolution. So tell me some of the, the really interesting parts that you discovered. Well, I realize that when we're making our resolutions, not only do we have to think about our country and how it benefits our country, but it must benefit all the other member states within the OAS. Mm -hmm. So when we were drafting our resolutions, we had to be extra careful and thorough and make sure that it's a resolution that would benefit all. Mm -hmm. So we had to be really careful about that, and that's yeah. what I learned. Well, for my resolution in particular, we had to be very careful with the language due to, well, the um, nature of the, what was being discussed in it. So really what we had to do was not uh, dictate what a country would have to do. We had to suggest uh, areas in which they can improve or what they can do uh, to uh, get this situation dealt with. Mm -hmm. So um, we can't really tell them what to do. We have to suggest and give them uh, pathways to follow on what they have to do. Mm -hmm. And for, you know, Ethan, uh, you know, I, uh, listening to you, this is your second time around going to, the OA, to actually to Washington. What did that do for you in terms of uh, uh, going for a second time? Did you want to go or was it something that, you know what, it was a part of your curriculum and this is what you needed to do? And what did it uh, do for you for the second time around? Well. I decided last year that I liked this very much and I actually wanted to go again <laughs> after I came back. So uh, this time around, uh, getting to meet with um, Ambassador Mendez, Ambassador Guterres, uh, and Ambassador Sotella, uh, I actually came more prepared than I did the year before and I was mm -hmm. able to ask them questions dealing with this. But I also got to 
ask them questions dealing with other things like how um well what can i do with this and how can i benefit my future from this because year before i actually found a liking for this type of thing liking for this uh well, diplomacy, diplomacy. And stuff. uh so going this year i realized that maybe this is something that i want to do maybe in the future mm. Mm. Fascinating. now uh michelle mm -hmm. tell us a bit about the selection of the students okay so we do have um, a process in place yeah students need to apply um, actual written application process. Um, they, it's required to have a 3.5 or higher GPA. Mm -hmm. um, community service is a requirement, so the number of hours you have completed, um, which is an overall requirement at Belize High School, mm -hmm. um, as well as leadership opportunities. So what have you um, been involved with at school in terms of leadership um, and service type of activities? So all of that's taken into consideration. They have to do an interview. Mm -hmm. um, and answer questions with um, the panel. Um, under the umbrella, we have the International Student Ambassadors Program. So through that, they do an interview. Um, and then the teachers sit and we kind of discuss um, mm -hmm. the criteria, the qualifications, you know, who demonstrated that they can handle mm -hmm. this type of um, leadership. Mm -hmm. And then we select 10. Um, it's divided two students per committee, five committees total. Okay. And then that's when the work begins. Um, <laughs> in preparing. The re yes, the, the researching, the meetings. We actually bring in um, Belizean professionals to work with our students as well in terms of getting their political science, their diplomacy, understanding. Mr. Green came in and did a session with them to understand the entire OAS and how yeah. it's structured and works. So um, all of that is a part of the selection process. Yeah. Wow. So it's not an easy, of course I not. just want to go <laughs> kind of thing. No. Um, so talk to us about uh, how you explain the functions of the organization to the young people so that they can have a head start for the model OAS. Well, having been a diplomat for Antigua and Barbuda, mm -hmm. um, the alternative representative to the OAS, I, I do have a real sense of how it works. So what I do, I, I go in uh, the classrooms, meet the students, and then we begin to talk about the organization. First of all, its budget. I, I tend to look at that because without its budget, the organization is not able to function. Mm -hmm. So I explain to them the, how it's organized, the amount of money we spend, and the programs that are prioritized mm -hmm. uh, with, with that money. And then I talk about countries. Who are the major players? Mm -hmm. The United States, the bigger countries, mm -hmm. Argentina, Colombia, Mexico, they play a major role. Then I explain to the students how can these powers be countered by other countries forming alliances. CARICOM, with 14 members, has a lot of power. And it's this kind of interplay and negotiations uh, that um, allow the organization to function. And so it's not just because a country is big, makes it powerful, mm. but can it harness the, 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 the support of other countries to get what it wants done? And so that's part of the process. Sure. What are some of the questions asked? Because, you know, it, it, it's very interesting, especially to know that, uh, you know, a, a lot of folks don't really know the work of the OAS. Like Marlene mentioned, we only know it as the Organization of American <laughs> States. As children. <laughs> as children. <laughs> so what are some of the questions asked by these, by these uh, young people in terms of uh, the work of the OAS? How does the organization go about solving problems, disputes among mm -hmm. member countries? because member countries do have disputes. Yeah. And questions like, who pays the most money? And who has the most weight in the organization? How does the organization organize its programs? And why does it give priority to, let's say, children's issues or to integral development? And why is human rights so important to the organization? What about democracy? How does the organization go about promoting democracy in all 34 member countries? So questions of this nature uh, are asked quite frequently, sure. And how are schools selected to, uh, to, to be a part of it? Absolutely. And, and well, in this case for Belize, and, and that's why I'm so excited about the BHS, this school has been the leading school in expressing its interest to be part of the program. 
I would want to extend it to other schools. Uh, finances is a big issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those schools that I've spoken to have been careful to let me know they just don't have the means to um, harness those resources necessary mm -hmm. to send 10, 7 students across to Washington, D.C. So that is something we're going to have to work on to see if we can broaden the net to include other schools in this program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. And looking at uh, the program as it has been running for the past three years. What are some of the takeaways for the school? Uh, and uh, what I mean by that is, what is the difference between this level of exposure of your students when you come back into the classroom? Okay. So um, for our students, part of what they're required to do is to put together an entire presentation, we call it a report back, mm -hmm. that they do to the entire school mm -hmm. as an, in an assembly to share their experience pre and post um, and then especially what happened during the conference. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, as Ethan referenced earlier, um, it's usually an eye-opening experience for them in terms of solidifying that career path. Mm -hmm. um, at Belize High School, going straight to university at the end of senior year is our main goal. Mm -hmm. um, so it helps them kind of clarify uh, what they will be interested in studying, um, they get real-world experience, real-time experience yeah. um, that they can apply to theory that they learn in the classroom, kind of hands-on practical so they're able to match the two yeah. and get better understanding in terms of content. Um, the experience that they have actually is cross-curricular, mm -hmm. yeah. English, Spanish. Um, majority of the countries that um, attended the session, the students, they do speak Spanish, that's their first language. Mm -hmm. um, the humanities courses, mm -hmm. um, so it is cross-curricular and they're able to apply the practical to the theory. Ethan and Emily, tell me what you have learned through your experience with the Model OES about how Belize fits into this hemisphere. Mm -hmm. mm, well, uh, Belize is, well, Aside from being a part of Caricom and Central America, where, uh, where they uh, sort of want or uh, have their influence, mm -hmm. uh, Belize's role in the OES, well, they have, uh, well, OES's role in Belize, as I should probably say, uh, mm -hmm. they help with the dispute with Guatemala. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Ambassador Gutierrez told me something while we were there that. Uh, being ambassador to the OES and to the United States in general isn't just uh, getting things done for just between Belize and Guatemala, but he has to go through, he has to go there and get uh, agreements done with uh, not just the OES but different, with different other countries as well mm -hmm. and United States representatives. So mm -hmm. uh, that's more what Belize uh, does with the OES yeah. and okay. United States as well. Yeah. Well. For countries that probably don't have a bigger voice, that's what the OAS or organizations like these would come in and help them. So basically uniting nations, countries together, um, making sure they have their opinion voiced, um, basically that. Yeah. Now, you know, we spoke about the lack of understanding at times as to the role of OES and I think Belize um, the first identifier when we think of OES is the work that's done in the adjacency zone with the uh, unfounded territorial claim by Guatemala but there's also the work that Mr. Green does Absolutely. here in, here he's based in Belize City which is separate when you hear now uh, issues come to light and, and people speaking about the organization that perhaps they don't have, uh, w what are your thoughts on it? Do you think that your parents, your friends, your family understand the impact of being a part of this regional body? Mm, well, um, the OAS does more than just um, the Belize Guatemala dispute, but they also send, uh, during elections, they send representatives down to mm -hmm. monitor them. Uh, they help uh, in other areas such as education, technology, and some other areas. Yeah. Um, so OES is really one, is a very important organization that does a lot for Belize. So uh, I guess being a member is comes with its benefits. Yeah. Sure. Well, yes, being a part of this is a benefit. And like what Ethan said, um, the OAS is an important organization. And 
Um, there are many benefits, you know, um, having better uh, knowledge of what actually happens and knowing what the problems these world leaders are trying to solve nowadays, mm -hmm. that's really important. Okay, right. all right. Well, it sounds like you guys had a great, great experience. Time. How many yeah. students went? Yeah. Uh, ten and ten. two chaperones. Oh, ten yeah. and wow. two chaperones. Yeah, All right. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> you'll, you'll be attempting another year again next year. Oh, yes. 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 And are you a senior now, Ethan? Yes. Yes. So no, you can't go next year. Yeah. Although there is a university <laughs> program, right? There is. With, with there a is. similar. Yeah. Oh. You can try there. <laughs> but um, then. Wonderful initiative, and uh, we really do wish you all the best. We know that this is uh, very important life mm -hmm. skills that you're learning beyond education. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is important for us all to understand what our roles are in these particular organizations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, right. thank you so Thank much you so much for Thanks being for having here. us. Thank you so All right, much. we're going to go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we'll be looking at Christmas tree decorations. So stay tuned.